Hello there, and you're very welcome to Prime Time. Well, should Lisa Smith, the Irish woman from Dundalk, who left this country to join the so-called Islamic State, be allowed to come back and live here with her two-year-old daughter? Today, the Taoiseach reiterated his view that they should, but warned of risk and cost in achieving this. In a minute, we'll bring you an extended interview with Lisa Smith, but first, let's just remind ourselves about the background to this story. Lisa Smith was born in Dundalk in 1981. She served as a member of the Irish Defence Forces from 2001 until 2011. First as a private, before later transferring to the Air Corps, where she notably performed the duties of flight attendant on the government jet when Bertie Ahern was Taoiseach. During her time in the Defence Forces, Lisa Smith became increasingly interested in the Muslim faith and eventually converted to Islam, becoming interested in the extremist beliefs of the so-called Islamic State. By 2015, she had made the decision to travel to Syria with the aim of living under the self-styled ISIS Caliphate. In establishing its regime in Iraq and Syria, ISIS had killed thousands of people, many of whom had been civilians, prisoners, or those it deemed to offend against its version of Islam. Videos of such atrocities were spread by the organization itself, while it also claimed credit for dozens of terrorist attacks across 20 other countries. It did not stop at killing either. While conducting a genocide of the Yazidis in Iraq, it enslaved thousands of women and girls. All of this was widely publicized, yet Lisa Smith still went to Syria. While there, she met and married a British jihadist. She says this was because women in Daesh territory are prohibited from living alone. In 2017, she gave birth to a daughter. Her husband was later killed in combat. There have been recurring allegations that Lisa Smith fought for ISIS. It's been alleged that Lisa Smith trained young girls in the use of weapons so they could become so-called cubs of the caliphate. As ISIS territory was gradually liberated, Lisa Smith stayed with the regime. In March of this year, the Kurdish-led forces closed in on its final stronghold, the town of Baghouz. Only then, in the last days of the regime, did she and her daughter join thousands of others in leaving. After being processed and interrogated in connection with her time in the caliphate, she's now in a refugee camp on the Syrian border with Iraq. Her future is uncertain. Well, right now, Lisa Smith is still being detained, along with her two-year-old daughter, Rakaya, in a refugee camp in Syria. Journalist Norma Costello was commissioned by RT to visit the camp and to interview her. To be honest, I don't think I will be going back, ever. <laughs> That's what I feel. That's what I think. They could be trying to make an example of me, I don't know, because uh, I'm actually Irish and I'm military and I'm a woman and I don't know, but maybe. Do you feel like the Taoiseach is being disingenuous when he says he'll take you back? No, maybe he's been truthful, like that he can take me back, uh, but he's, they're just trying to find a way that's safe enough. Maybe there is a danger, like, you know, I don't know what's going on. Charlie Flanagan said that they weren't going to send anyone, any diplomat, to visit you because the region is too dangerous. Mm. I mean, what do you think about that statement? Uh, I don't know, because uh, Kosovo and Sudan and other people have come here, like diplomats or whatever, or, peop or people from the country representatives have come here speaking to the to the people, you know. If there was an option for Rakai to go home and you stay here, would you mm. support that? No. I don't want to be with my daughter. <laughs> if the government came to you tomorrow and said, we will take your daughter, but you have to stay. Mm. You would stay here with her indefinitely, despite the heat and temperatures? Yeah, because I love my daughter. <laughs> yeah. I know, what mother is going to give up our daughter like that, you know? It's very hard to talk about my family, like, because I haven't seen them, and it's hard, like... They still, they still love you. They've mm. asked about you, they've asked me to tell you that, you know, they were asking for you, mm. and, you know, your father gets quite emotional when he speaks about you. Mm. 
Just give me a minute. <laughs> Kids that we're actually going to see later today that you did train. Please bring them here. They're, those children are too afraid of you. They don't want to see you. But I mean, let me just run this scenario by you. Are you sure it's me? Because they don't know my name. Absolutely, cause. What is? How did they know me? Uh, what did they know me as by? Let, let me just run this scenario by mm. you, and then you can go see. Okay. Um, so basically, you were teaching along with the Tunisian teacher, and you were teaching children in weapons. I never trained anyone. I never walked. I've never seen anything, and it's very interesting that you send these kids. I don't, don't even know who these people are. They don't even know my real name. They don't even know. I don't even speak Arabic. Like, how can I walk with a Tunisian? Does the Tunisian speak English? Do these children speak English? I don't know what they're talking about. Here in Syria, mm. women who were raped by ISIS men, their children are not being accepted back into Iraq mm. because the Yazidi community won't accept them. I mean, that's what the organization you were a member of. I mean, like, what do you think about that now? I don't know what's happening out there, you know. <clears throat> For me, it was all a lie. I still don't know to this day what happened to the Yazidis, what's, what's true. A lot of people, even myself, believe that the Islamic State started off with a great intention to have an Islamic State, but somewhere it got hijacked, you know. And in this hijacking, you know, it became communist and nationalized and this and that because it was all Iraqi run. You know, look, you can't blame me for what the Islamic State done. Do you understand? I don't hold the same beliefs as them. Do you understand? I came to a caliphate which Islam was meant to be implemented. Now, I have different beliefs, you know, than the majority of people, maybe even the Dawla. I mean, and I think a lot of people in the, in the Islamic State, they come from all over the world. They have different beliefs, they have different understandings of Islam. You know, and it's for me, it's like for me, it's a big ball of confusion, you know. What is radical? Like, I don't understand clearly. Like, I don't know how somebody needs to explain it to me properly, you know, because I don't understand what radical is, you know. Like, in terms of like being a Muslim and wanting to live in a Muslim state, I don't understand how that is radical. Like, but you would have seen the propaganda videos, and we spoke about this, like, yeah. CDs, all of that, like, does that... I didn't see any of these videos, these uh, CDs, videos, or anything. Well, I sure. never seen... You would have known about it. Either. I've heard about it, but I heard it's not true. I just heard it's just people lying about the devil. So can we get into specifics, then, of what you saw in ISIS-controlled territory that mm. made you think, okay, this isn't the Islamic State? Though? I actually didn't see anything. Just to be honest, I didn't see anything. I've heard stories, just, and actually, I've heard more stories since I've come to the camp, and women speaking or towards my end of my time, like in the hygiene time, you know, like I met some sisters and they would tell me some horrific stories of what the Islamic State did to them. And that's how I learned mostly. Like I didn't really see nothing because I was at home all the time. What is the radicalized? I'm a Muslim. I believe in one God of all mankind. I believe in as living in a proper Islamic state, just like the Kurds believe that they need a Kurdistan, just like the Yahud believe that they have Israel, like Americans believe that they should have a president and an America. It's exactly the same thing for me. Is this really how you envisioned your journey to Syria ending, like in a camp? In no. I honestly thought either <laughs> we'd actually have a, a, a somewhere to live, a state like, or as maybe I'd be killed. But I didn't think we'd be, I'd have a child and I'd be in a camp and trying to get home. <laughs> you're paying quite a big price for joining. Mm. Do you feel like your sacrifice was worth it? No. It wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it because at the end of the day, they failed, you know? It failed. What we believed, the, the, we actually thought uh, there was going to be an Islamic state and the best Muslims from the, with the best character, with the best adab, where everything, you know, knowledgeable would be here and we'd all kind of be joined as one and be very happy, you know, like... Didn't happen. Do you think the Irish government and the Irish people would believe that you didn't fight? I don't know if they would believe or not, but that's the truth, <laughs> you know? Whether they believe or not, I, that's up to them, you know? But I'm telling you from myself, mm -hmm. I didn't fight. Really? Why? What did I do? I just joined the Islamic State and now I become a monster? 
entire my months away. I came here to Islamic State and I didn't do anything. A lot of people came here to Islamic State and got depressed, or oppressed and got tortured in actual Muslim prisons. Muslims got tortured in Muslim prisons. And they tried to run away and then got caught again and got put more and more prisons. And they're trying to go home and they can't go home because they're known as monsters and terrorists. And they didn't even do anything wrong. People have also described kids like Rakaya as ticking time bombs. Why? How do you feel about your child being described? How can a child be a ticking time bomb? A child doesn't even have any understanding of what's going on around him now. You know? How can they be ticking time bombs? And it's not even her fault that she was born in Syria, you know? Would she be seen as a child of a terrorist? No. This is what I'm worried about, though. You know? I do have my concerns, like, going back to Ireland because of this, you know? And that's why I say, like, if things like that happened, I believe that things do be forgotten about in time. You know, right now, yeah, everything's public, everything's crazy, everything is, like, up in the air, you know? Then things die down. Then another, something else will happen in the world or something happen in Ireland, and that will become a big thing. And over time, things, people forget about things, you know? In a year, two years, people forget things, three years, four years. But Lisa, a lot of people are saying it's going to be a very expensive process policing mm. you and mm. surveillance. Mm. Do you think it's fair that nurses and teachers and cleaners have to pay their tax money mm. for your surveillance? No, I don't agree with it, but any, I'm not asking them to surveil me. If they want the surveillance on me, then that's their choice. I'm not asking them to put surveillance on me, you know? I'm telling you, I'm not asking to come home to blow anyone up or to do anything, you know? So it's only their concerns, their fears. Like for me, I, they don't have to fear. They don't have to worry about me, you know? I'm not going I'm not, I know they probably don't believe me or no, no, but I'm not allowed to do anything, you know? I told you, I'm just a person who came to the Islamic State, like any other, any of these. Yeah, I do know there is other people here with really extreme and radical views, really extreme and radical views, you know? And I don't even want to communicate with these people, you know? But I'm not like this. I'm just, I just came here and now it didn't work out. The Irish government don't take me and the countries don't take these people. What's going to happen to us? Maybe uh, the Islamic State will try and rise up again and they'll probably just, from, from wherever they are, hiding or whatever, then they'll just come back and try and rescue everyone from the prisons and create another war. And then they'll take us back that way. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen.